After most genes are transcribed, the introns are excised and removed, and the remaining exons are spliced together, and this mRNA will then undergo translation to produce the protein product. However, there is an opportunity for post-transcriptional control in differential splicing of exons. Not all cells need to include the same exons in the mRNA. And thus, in this example, if each exon codes for a specific portion of the protein product, the parts of the protein which will be translated depend on which of the exons are included in the mRNA. A different set of exons which are united to form an mRNA would result in different sections of the protein once the mRNA is translated. This was one of the reasons that early estimates of the human genome overestimated the number of genes. It was not appreciated the degree to which alternate splicing of exons can produce multiple protein products from the same gene. Thus, two different cells can express the same gene but produce different proteins from it. If different sets of exons are spliced together, the protein sections will vary from one cell type to another cell type, even though both of these proteins are the product of the same gene. Genetic comparisons suggest that some genes have their origin in the fusion of exons from separate genes, and so therefore the shuffling of exons of separate genes to make new genes seems to be one of the sources of variation in evolution.